Hello crafty friends, it's Jess from JessCrafts.com and today I'm here with another 6x6 paper pad tutorial. This time I'm featuring the Cartabella Dinosaurs collection. I picked out this paper pad because I thought that it would work really well for kids and I donate my cards to a lot of organizations that support kids, such as Cards for Kids or Cards for Hospitalized Kids. If you go over to my blog, and I'll leave you a link to this in the video description, my card drive resources page shares a bunch of places that you can donate your cards, and I share jokes that you can print out to put on the inside of your cards, as many of these organizations ask you to write a sentiment or um, some sort of personal message on the inside, and I find that including a joke helps me to kind of know what to say a little bit. So there are actually dinosaur-specific jokes because I have worked with dinosaur themes in the past. And you, if you're going to craft with this pad and wanted to donate your cards or craft with something similar, you know, or if you had dinosaur stamps, etc., there are a whole bunch of different themes of jokes over on my channel, like different animal categories and things like that. So moving on to how I'm going to set up this paper pad. I took these two dies from the Whimsy Stamps Quick Strips die collection. That particular die set has a lot of sentiment sized banners and I picked these two that I liked then I decided to go and find some sentiments that worked well you could of course just use like general hello type sentiments but because I had some dinosaur themed sets I picked out some punny sentiments I chose to use lawn fawn critters from the past and heffy doodle dino time the mft one the sentiment didn't quite fit on the banners for me. I cut a bunch of these banners out of craft cardstock. This was a great way to use up random scraps of craft cardstock. I am never concerned if I have a bunch of cardstock scraps because I always find there's something to do with them. Sentiment strips or doubling them up to create fake foam tape, like gluing two pieces of heavyweight cardstock together and then gluing that behind your images instead of foam tape, more environmentally friendly and cheap because you're just using up those scraps that you may not have known what to do with anyway. I have this sentiment that's from the Heffy Doodle set, but it's supposed to, the whole sentiment says, you're pretty roarsome. And I wanted to take out the pretty just because it didn't, otherwise it wouldn't fit on the banner. So I had to cut the stamp which is not a big deal. You can always place them back together like you're going to see here. However, it did make it to be a little bit more finicky to line them up. The clear stamps kind of like stick to your hand as you're placing them. And so I it took me a while to get this lined up. And maybe it would have been faster to stamp all of this with a block, but I don't think so just because I was able to stamp two by using my Misty. You can certainly use a stamp block. I do use stamp blocks all the time, particularly for sentiments, just because they tend to stamp well with one stamping. Um, larger images, I do prefer my Misty, especially things that I'm gonna color that you know I might need, or if I'm gonna stamp a whole bunch of things at one time. My stamp block might stamp one stamp really, really well, but if I'm going to try to stamp out like the whole stamp set so I can just color all the images, I find it easier to use my Misty. I'm going to take the deep sea, which is like a navy, really dark blue from Lawn Fawn to stamp these. You could certainly use black, but if you look in the paper pad, it's very cream based, which is why I chose the craft and I'm going to use craft cardstock. This is Michael's Recollections craft cardstock. And I also don't really see a lot of black in the collection. There's a lot of brown dark blue and green or well, many shades of blue and some gray. So I thought, you know, why not mix it up just a little bit since I do have some colors of ink on hand and go with this dark blue. So here I can put in two and stamp two. Every time I ha use a rounded sentiment, it's going to be the your Rarsome. And every time I use the uh, sort of triangly banner and traditional banner sentiment is going to say your dynamite. The, I'm going to base which one I use kind of off the size of them. The Your Rarsum is a little bit thicker and also a little bit longer. So there are times when that's gonna look better on the card. And there are times when the Your Dynamite is gonna work a little better. There was a particular paper in the collection that said the names of the dinosaurs at the top. You could absolutely keep those. 
they actually have like a little like um, subtitle for the dinosaurs too. I think it's cute. I think you could put the sentiment on the bottom instead if you don't want to cover the name on a lot of them, but sometimes it kind of covers up the dinosaur. I decided to cut them up and I decided to cover up all of the names with my sentiments. You don't have to put sentiments on the front of cards. So if you like having the names and there's no other kind of spot on the card for it, I would say just go for it with leaving the the name of the dinosaur there. I think kids would like that just as much as well. I put all of these, so there were six of them on a paper, the six by six paper. They're about three by two. They're going to, I want to put them on a mat. So it's going to be a quarter inch bigger, three and a quarter by two and a quarter. You don't need to know the measurements because like any six by six paper pad tutorial on my channel, there is a coordinating blog post where I share pictures, still pictures of each card, as well as underneath, I will share the measurements. Something that I'm going to start trying to do more and slowly add to some older posts is I don't use card sketches. I know a lot of people do and a lot of people like card sketches. I find that when I use card sketches, I feel more restricted. I have a harder time using up the whole paper pad and I feel like I'm left with more scraps. Now, more scraps is not a really big deal because you certainly could just glue them to the inside. But when if you're using like a lot of die cut circles or other die cut shapes, which sketches sometimes call for, I find that it creates like weird scraps, which is fine. Like I, there's no reason not to do that. And I actually am, have recently challenged myself and will be sharing a video in the future where I do use some pre-made sketches. My point is... What I'm going to start trying to do more often, and you will see in this blog post, is I'm going to, once I have finished creating a card and I've taken all those measurements, I'm going to take that and I'm going to turn it into a sketch and you will be able to go link to, a, there's going to be actually, and there already is up on my blog, and there, of course there will be when this video is released, a card sketches page. And so some of the cards from this video will be turned into card sketches with measurements. All of my sketches will have measurements and there will be a bunch of other ones from past videos. Now, a lot of times I use the same design, but I have slightly different measurements. So the measurements that I, I will always share the measurements for the specific paper pad I'm working on, but I might reference a sketch where the measurements are slightly different because the basic layout is very very similar so it's not worth creating a second sketch for I just think that would be more overwhelming to anyone who's trying to collect sketches so another thing that I like to do sometimes with these tutorials is use up something else in my stash here I'm going to use some twine twine is something that I've used recently and many times in the past it's one of those things where even if you only bought a few spools, you're going to have it for a while. And so using it, like, you know, even if you try to complete three or four paper pads, you sometimes you'll still have twine left just because it, there's so much, it's so cheap. And I, you know, I think it's a great embellishment. I think it adds a lot. And in this case, I kind of showed you there briefly, when you glue down a paper that has twine taped to it, it's going to kind of pop off the page a little bit. It's obviously not going to lay perfectly flat because it has dimension to it. So something that I will often do is like this uh, picture here. I have put my fake foam tape, my layers of cardstock on the back such that the twine goes underneath and the image is popped up. And that way I don't have to worry about whether my image will stay stuck to the paper because the twine's popping it off. However, the blue piece that I glued the twine to and wrapped around the edges, I didn't do that. And it's certainly not something you have to do. You can glue stuff with twine directly to like, you know, a piece of paper that has twine attached directly to another piece of paper. And often it will hold if your adhesive is strong enough and you've put it around the twine. Um, but it does give a sort of lumpier look. And therefore, I would suggest when it makes sense to add a little bit of additional dimension. Okay, moving on to some other cards. This is one that I believe I have a sketch for. And this is something that I really like to do. It actually 
Um, I have a one sheet wonder video. Well, I have more than one now, and I will. I'm gonna try to continue to add to them. But I show how you can cut up one piece of six by six paper and get a card that has a very similar layout to this one. And you'll get two cards exactly with no scraps. So if you're watching the six by six paper pad tutorial, you probably want to know how to, you know, really efficiently use six by six paper. So I will um, link you to those one sheet wonder videos. If you haven't seen them yet, you can find them over on my channel. Basically, um, that background paper, I liked it, but rather than just cutting out the big four by five and a quarter sheet of it and just gluing that to the back by cutting it into strips first and leaving a little bit of space in between, it adds interest, but it's basically like having that larger piece of paper. I had some, uh, um, I had a little bit of extra left over so I could continue to make strips with that same piece of paper. A lot of these cards, there's gonna be two of them. Uh, there's one card, there's only one of, and occasionally I'll make multiple of a similar design because there are two of each sheet in this paper collection. That is very often true. A lot of paper collections that I've worked with, there are two of each sheet. Sometimes there are three or four of each sheet. Very rarely do I find a paper collection where you just get one of each. So I tend to design a card and just make another one of it because I will have enough paper to, you know, to copy the same thing. Also, as you see there, once I just finished designing and kind of thinking about where I was going to lay everything down, I took all of the pieces and I put it in a plastic bag. Those happen to be the five by eight bags that I store my stamps in, but you can use like a regular sandwich zip top bag and they fit in there as well. The reason I do that is so that I can finish assembling my cards at a different time. I've heard from feedback from a couple different crafters that they think that that's a good idea. They also like doing that. Like they said, you know, sometimes they'll do it when they're on a Zoom call or watching TV or something like that. And that's kind of where I am on it too. I just like to kind of keep the designs and the ideas flowing by coming up with a bunch of designs at one time and then doing all the gluing and assembling at a separate time. I know I mentioned that a lot, but I never know when it's someone's first video here and they get kind of curious about what I'm doing. I, as I go through a six by six paper pad, I try to always think about the scraps that I've just created. So rather than, um, it's like when, I've tried to use sketches in the past. I get caught up in like making a card that follows the sketch and making another card that follows the sketch. And sometimes, you know, I'm making three or four cards and they haven't really called for the size of the scrap that the previous sketch made. And that gets frustrating to me. And I sometimes, you know, if I am doing that and I will show you this in the, the upcoming video where I do use sketches. I kind of just veer away from the sketches at a certain point but like there I had those little tiny bits that I kind of let hang out underneath those like little like tabs and that's I created that card and that design because I wanted to make sure I was using those and not waiting till the end of the video and I had a bunch of like one inch by two inch strips left. There were a couple of papers in this paper pad that were kind of challenging. This is a very large design here. It, the whole piece of paper is printed with this dinosaur scene, which I think is cool. And there's another side. You, If you don't want to use this super large scene, you absolutely can just use the other side of the paper. But I liked the scene. I thought it looked cool. So I just took a cat scrappiness distressed edge die and I cut it out and I added a sentiment. And maybe that's not a very creative or personalized card, but it's a cool scene. It's, you know, a cool piece of art that this person drew to make these pattern papers. So uh, that's kind of just, that's what I chose to do. There were also this, this pattern paper here that has a bunch of strips of different scenes. And it was another one that was kind of challenging because they're cool. Like I think they should be a, a significant element on a card. However, once you cut them apart, they, you could only fit like two on a card, but then there was this extra room in the middle. 
And I decided that that was the perfect place for a sentiment. And I had these scraps that you see in there in my right hand that were solid green. And I thought that would do enough to kind of fill up without taking away from these scenes. So I took these papers, which were six inches long because the paper is six inches long, and I decided which end to trim off so they were five and a quarter. And I just kind of picked the end that had less going on in the scene and was, you know, focused more on it. Then I will put one at the top and one at the bottom. So I picked, there's four of this card because there were four strips and there's two strips on each, well, there's four strips and two pieces of paper, so eight strips and then two on each card, blah, blah, blah. So you'll see it on the blog, but I used the same design twice. I took the strips and I glued one to the top and one to the bottom. Then I used the die that I cut out the sentiment with to cut out that green solid. Now there's a, there's a pattern on the other side, but I didn't want to distract too much. I kind of wanted to let these papers be the star of the show. So I was able to die cut it, glue it down on one side, cut off the extra and use that to complete it. So even though it looks like there's two strips on each of these, like two green strips, it's actually one just kind of cut apart. And that's a way you can avoid a lot of scraps too. And I didn't need to have a lot of this green paper to make this work. So that was another sort of like unique challenge I had felt. And I wanted to make sure that I kind of walked you a bit through my thought process with that one. There are also a lot of very simple patterns and nature themed patterns. And I appreciated that those were like very easy to work with because it was kind of nice to sometimes create a simpler card after working with some of those challenging papers. But something to consider about this collection, and I think this happens for all, well actually I don't know which one's the like sort of owner company, I think it's Echo Park, but like Echo Park and Cardabella and there's one more. They're all like sort of under the same company umbrella. And so a lot of their uh, products are similar in the sense of like all their six by six paper pads are actually a little bit bigger than six by six. And they have that hole in the top because when you have the collection, you want to be able to like put it on the ring at the store. Although I, I'm not lucky enough to have a local scrapbooking store, so I have to order all of my things online. But that's the idea there that you, you know, and so it leaves this hole at the top of all the paper. But it's cool because the paper is printed all the way to the edge. So other than the hole, it's actually giving you a little bit more paper to work with. But it can be challenging to work around that. As you, you might have noticed that I have used pieces that have the hole in it multiple times and I just cover it. I don't really like worry too much about it. I, you know, I, I want to use that thicker piece of paper if I can make it a more substantial element on the card. And there are other times where I just cut it off. Like this one here has all these little, um, I think they're about one and a half inch squares. And then the hole at the top, that strip of paper doesn't, isn't particularly useful but that's okay. You know, that's going to happen sometimes. And there are times where I just kind of let it go and let it be. And there's other times where the paper that's left at the top with the hole in it is really useful. This was another paper that took a little bit of thought to figure out how I would use. I decided to cut them into two by two squares so that there'd be four on each. And then I found that for the most part, I could pick a sentiment that went inside of them without covering too much of the dinosaur. So I, you know, picked out whether I wanted the Eurodynamite or the Eurorarsum in the center. The Eurorarsum is a little bit bigger. So that was, you know, a factor there. And then I matted it with some craft card stock. Here again, I have this piece of paper. Now, if you remember, this is the one that had that really large scene on the back and I cut it with the distressed edge rectangle. I don't usually use a lot of dies in these videos, but what was interesting is normally this could be kind of a challenge because I was left with this piece that has this like jaggedy die cut edge here, but I actually thought that worked out to be a really cool design element. So I flipped the paper over and I'm using the other side and I'm being able to, or I'm, I'm able to create a little bit of an interest element here 
by um, just leaving that. And again, the hole in the top of the paper doesn't matter. And I'm able to use a bigger piece of paper by just making sure that when I place my little dinosaur square element here, it's enough to cover it. I will say that when I worked with these two by two square pieces here, I did go for some simpler cards. This, in, in general, I think this paper pad actually has a lot of really simple cards that, you know, what I did with it. And I think that's in part because the paper itself has a fair amount going on. There you're going to see there's like a comic book paper going forward. And these pictures are actually quite detailed. Also, I think that like there, you don't always need a bunch of paper layers, you know, that, uh, I, I don't know. I know a lot of people like to add a lot of layers and I do sometimes too. I have recently, um, shared some collections where I've used a lot of mats and on my one sheet wonders, I'm always putting the extra layers of cardstock, but I just don't always know that it's needed. And here, I think this is kind of a good example where there's so much going on in that square like there's four little pictures that are quite detailed um, that I just didn't feel a need to do much more. Here is a classic thing I love to do with my six by six paper pad tutorials. I had these strips that were left over. When you cut a sort of standard card like background, it's usually four by five and a quarter. If you mat, maybe it's a little smaller. And that leaves you with a two by six inch strip. If you combine two two by six inch strips together, then you'd have enough to create another four by something background. I usually just take another scrap of paper. So here in this case, this red scrap, which has a different pattern on the other side, but I use that to cover up the seam that's created. If you don't have a lot of extra cardstock or sorry, a lot of extra pattern paper, you can still, you know, combine them and cover the seam with a coordinating piece of cardstock that would actually look quite similar in this situation. I don't know if you heard whatever just fell in my room, but sorry about that. Anyway, I kind of forgot that I was supposed to be using twine and I'm going to use it a few more times here at the end of the video. It was also partly because I a lot of the designs I was making just didn't really work very well for twine, but I'm going to have to pop up those elements to cover the twine again. All right, so this was this comic book paper. I think this comic book paper is really, really cool. But again, I was like not quite sure how to use it. There was a part of me that was like, I, I could just cut it with this distress edge rectangle and add a sentiment again, because it's a really cool paper in and of itself. But I had just created these scraps from those cards where I used the red paper to connect the two. And I thought, well, that will help my sentiment stand out a bit more and uh, like add a little extra something to these cards. So I'm going to take that um, like, like piece together scrap. I'm going to put it on a craft mat. I can put a little bit of quarter inch strip around it. And that's because these, like the, particularly this word one is kind of busy. So if I match it up with that comic book background, which is also kind of busy, I think that they'll just kind of clash. I do think there, you know, there's a time and I don't mat everything, but there's certainly a time and a place for it where it can really punch up a card um, or really make a card look more put together. And this is one of those instances. So I put them both on a piece of craft cardstock mat. And as you can see, I'm certainly using scraps for that. And then I took the two sentiments and I'm going to attach those. Now I have left this piece that has some of the comic book panels on it. And this is very much towards the end of this paper pad. There isn't really, and so I, you know, when I started the paper pad, I was able to cut up that sheet of dinos and I got like six dinos out of each paper. And then I was able to cut up the sheet of squares. And those have been a, like able to be the focal point of my cards very often. And at this point, I'm kind of like, well, I can put some papers together, but 
what is the main image of the card? Like, what are you going to be looking at? Um, you can, of course, create cards where they don't really have a focal image per se, but I was like, there's probably a way that I can use these comic book strips and make focal points. So I'm going to very carefully um, trim them up so that I've cut away the comic book edges and I've cut away any of the die edges. These will create some scraps there that are kind of odd. Um, you could certainly, most of them, you could still attach to the inside of cards, but there are going to be some strips of, or some scraps in this paper collection that I basically just choose not to use. And I'm okay with that. I, you know, I feel like when I create these cards, I get a lot out of the paper pack. And while I try my hardest to really use up every little scrap, and I often decorate the inside with them, sometimes I just have to let it go. <laughs> and that's what I'll, I'll do with some of those. I matted these again because they are really busy and they kind of need a break between them and the background paper, in my opinion. So I'm going to leave the dinosaur kingdom part showing. It might seem a little bit random and it, it kind of is like, I mean, it's supposed to be like the name of the comic, but I think it looks cool. I don't really mind it. And I will put the sentiment in the bottom right hand corner to balance that out. This was like the only piece of pattern paper I had left. So I wanted to create a card for both of those little like images that I'd cut out and matted. The other dinosaur I had used some pattern paper to mat him and that's why it looks green or it is green um it's not not green cardstock that I added now this piece of paper in order to keep it pretty large I had to work around the holes or work with the holes and I also had a bunch of strips like you can see there that have the holes in it and I could try to work to place everything such that this dinosaur was going to cover them but it got to the point where I thought it was going to kind of force me to have an awkward positioning so instead I decided to cut off of the strips the part that had the holes and it was still large enough that I could um it left kind of like a border all around and I'm actually going to mix it up and I'm going to use one stripe and one blue on each of these cards I thought about adding a sentiment to them but once I put the sentiment there, it kind of like pushed him up over them and I just didn't really like that. So you'll see in the still card when everything is finished that I just decided to forego a sentiment and I think you can do that whenever. Here off to the left, I am moving aside what I consider to be like genuine in the trash scraps and a lot of times I don't even have very many of those, but these were created from very specific cuts that I was trying to make in terms of cutting elements out. Or um, these papers, when you pull them out of the pad, sometimes they have this like little bit of like sticky stuff from where the pad is glued together. And so I trim that off sometimes. But I'm looking at these scraps, trying to decide if there is enough of something left to create one more card. I know that a lot of people like to see a card made from like truly, truly scraps. And so I'm not always able to do it, but today you're going to see like a legit scrap card. So I had these two pieces of brown that were pretty substantial and a piece of green. Although again, these are all double-sided, so there's something on the other side that could work too. But I thought that... Um, Keeping it simpler would be like potentially work a little better for a scrap card. But I wanted there to be something dinosaur about it. So I found this dinosaur scrap and trimmed it such that I could put it on the green piece here. I find that when you have a lot of smaller pieces, putting them in stacks and lining them up tends to look really good. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm making like, you know, the, the brown and the green and the brown stack again. And then I just took that little piece of dinosaur paper and trimmed it up and added the sentiment. It's not my favorite car. It's not like an amazing design, but I think it looks cute and I think someone will still appreciate it. And if you don't want to do something that scrap based, you could certainly just tape those scraps to the inside like I'm doing here. I'm just kind of showing you quickly what I mean by that. 
I just pick a couple patterns that I like and, and place them on the inside. All right. Wow. That is it for my card tutorial today. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in more crafting tutorials, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will leave you links in the video description to the products that I used, to the coordinating blog post where you can see all the still pictures and find the measurements, uh, to card drive resources, and to the card sketches that I mentioned in case any of those resources are helpful to you. I would love for you to leave me a comment, let me know what your favorite card is or anything else. I just love talking to you guys in the description to, or to the, in the comment section down there. Thank you so much for watching. Have an awesome day. Bye.